Hello, I'm here today with author and attorney Mark Halligan from Fisher Broyles, and he's going to talk a little bit about his books today. Mark, how are you doing? Very good. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks so, for inviting me. So um, you were approached about writing a book a while back on the Defend Trade Secrets Act. Can you tell everyone a little bit about what your book covers and why it's relevant? Well, uh, the Defend Trade Secrets Act uh, of 2016 is a watershed event in intellectual property law, and it's the culmination of uh, you know years of work on my part um, to uh, emphasize the need for a federal civil cause of action. In most cases, the victims are corporations, and they should have access to the federal courts. Okay. In what cases would the Defend Trade Secret Act apply? Well, in any case involving uh, the uh, uh, alleged misappropriation or the actual misappropriation or threatened misappropriation of trade secrets, you now have access to bring a private civil cause of action that is subject matter jurisdiction in the federal courts nationwide. So now you've, you've written a second book more recently, the Trade Secret Asset Management 2018 book. Can you tell people a little bit about what that's about? Well, that, that's, the, that's the next phase in, in trade secrets law. That is the internal active management by companies of their trade secret assets, which involves identification, classification, protection, and valuation. And in order to uh, uh, be able to use the Defend Trade Secrets Act and be able to allow this intellectual property right to thrive and grow, now with federal protection in the courts, you have to have internal systems in place for these trade secret assets. So do clients sometimes contact you before employees leave and take things to proactively try to make sure their, their stuff's in order? Well, uh, unfortunately, companies wait until the horse is out of the barn, <laughs> yeah. and then they scramble to retain outside counsel, and then I scramble around trying to determine what the trade secrets are and what the evidence of misappropriation is. And we've seen this play out uh, in major cases now. Uh, most recently, the, the Waymo case out in California, uh, where, you're, where everybody is running around trying to determine what's at issue in the case. So it's better to do that ahead of time with internal management. So clients that are proactive and they get an assessment of what their assets are beforehand, uh, do they tend to spend less money when they become embroiled with litigation if they've done that? Yes, advance? yes, absolutely. If you have internal active uh, trade secret management, uh, you are able to identify within a matter of uh, seconds, literally, uh, the trade secrets that are at issue and the evidence that the employee had access to those trade secrets or the former employee. Now, you have some proprietary program you develop that deals with that, correct? I do. Uh, the name of the program is the Trade Secret Examiner, and it was introduced, commercially deployed uh, version, uh, I believe, version four or version five last August, and it, it is a revolutionary new platform to assist companies in the identification, classification, protection, and valuation of trade secret assets. So, if, if someone is watching this video at night and they're executive of a company and they just lost their head of sales and marketing, uh, what steps should they take immediately to help protect their company and their client base? <clears throat> well, uh, if, they have, if they have been engaged in internal trade secret asset management, then I would expect they have a trade secret incident response plan that could be activated immediately and a SWAT team, uh, which is essentially outside counsel, ready to go to the courthouse. You know, and if they do not have those procedures and mechanisms in place, then they call me and I head out to the company with a yellow pad and a pen and start to interview witnesses to see if I can determine what the trade secrets are and what the evidence of misappropriation is. So once you have reason to believe that some of your client's data was inappropriately taken and misappropriated, what, what do you do um, first to get ready for court after, after you've taken those notes? Um, what do you prepare, have to do to prepare <clears throat> for your TRO? Well, again, from a forensic standpoint, uh, the first thing you need to do is cordon off the area where the defendant worked or had computers, and you get end case images of, of the computer to preserve the evidence. Uh, yeah. You certainly don't want to have the IT department flailing around inside the computer because uh, you know that that will change the the uh, the evidence. 
You know, it was an interesting, Mark. Uh, one of my colleagues, Al Alex Gesson, had done some research, and what he realized is that companies that use tools such as FTK Imager, when you capture the forensic image of a hard drive device, it records a serial number for that device that is not detected when you do forensic analysis to see if devices were plugged in. In actuality, there's two serial numbers on a hard drive, and only one of the two serial numbers is the one reported, and they're not always consistently detected. So we, uh, we agree with you on that, using NCASE to, to make the forensic image. NCASE actually, at the time of imaging, NCASE will capture the serial number that can be detected in the registry. So what, what we've discovered is that people who haven't used NCASE, they later on do this analysis to see was the thumb drive plugged into the other computer, and they could actually have a false negative because they didn't appropriately image the media at, at issue. Well, that's fascinating, and that shows you how critical it is to do the forensics correctly at the very beginning of the case. Yeah. Could be case determinative. So you've done the forensics, and you're, you're going into court. Uh, what are you hoping to prove when you've done computer forensics? What are what type of things are you hoping to be able to express in the form of an affidavit or support for your motion? Well, a trade secret misappropriation case involves the uh, actual or threatened misappropriation of trade secrets. So you're, you, what you're trying to do is protect these fragile assets. I mean, a trade secret once lost is lost forever. So you, you are attempting to stop the bleeding, plug the dike, uh, get an order that there is to be a preservation of evidence, um, also stop the continuing misappropriation activity or if it has not occurred yet through injunctive relief set up set up a wall to prevent the uh, misappropriation of trade secrets and uh, to the extent possible prevent its dissemination to other computers in the United States or to other parts of the world. Well, Mark, can you tell me uh, any war stories about your use of computer forensics and what happened going into court? Well, I, I think uh, what I have seen uh, in several occasions, and I represented a major company in, in a case involving uh, very serious uh, acts of trade secret misappropriation and alleged foreign economic uh, espionage. Um, you know, the federal courts want to protect the privacy rights uh, of individuals uh, with electronically stored information, so there's always this tension between you know, the plaintiff seeking to prove up its trade secret case or misappropriation of trade secrets with the defendant's interest in protecting the privacy of, of uh, files and things uh, that are on the computer. So oftentimes the court requires search terms. And you start off the case by looking at whether or not these search terms pop up on the computers. And, and, um, and in, in a case that I was involved with, when those search terms were plugged in, we found that a file destruction software program had been run, oh, that and, and that the clocks had <laughs> and that the clock had been uh, changed. And with that kind of evidence before the judge, we were then given access to the entire computer. No computer, no more search terms. And when we got access to the entire compu uh, computer, we found out other third parties that were involved, and of course the case expanded to uh, involve other defendants, other. Uh, entities, but it all happened with the finding on the initial search terms of indicia of a file destruction software being yeah. run. Well, thanks a so bunch for being on the show today, Mark. This was great stuff, and thank you. People need to reach you; they can see the link to your website. Thank thanks you. So much. Thank you very much. Take care.